at Brainiacs! Here on Neurotransmissions, we spend a lot of time talking about the human brain, which kind of makes sense, because that's the sort of brain our viewers have. Well, most of them, anyway. But of course, all other animals have brains too, and some of their brains are really amazing. Since it's Halloween season, we thought we'd talk about everyone's favorite spooky critter, bats. <laughs> My friend and fellow neuroscientist, Margot Wool is here to help explain them to us. Hey there! Margot is a graduate student at UCSD and the host of Rad Scientist, a podcast on kpbs.org backslash radscientist, highlighting cool scientists and their lives in and around San Diego. She's also an avid bat fan. Yeah, bats are awesome. Margot, what makes bats so cool? Well, because bats live in caves and fly at night, they had to come up with a way to see in the dark. And to do this, they've evolved echolocation. Echolocation is the emission and reception of sound, using the echo to learn something about the location of objects in space. It can also provide information on the size, shape, velocity, and even texture of an object. Right. Differences in the echo tell the bat different things about what it's seeing. The most obvious thing that the bat will detect is distance by how long it takes sound to bounce off the object and return. By the loudness of sound that returns, the bat knows how large an object is. The bigger an object, the more sound gets reflected. If the pitch or frequency of an echo changes from the one emitted, the bat knows that the object it's detecting is on the move. Yeah, and echolocation can say something about texture too. An echo off of a flat surface will return largely unchanged, whereas a craggy rock surface will bounce the sound waves in many different directions. Bats can vary the rate at which they make calls as they get closer to their destination. The more frequently they make their calls, the more information they're getting about what they're looking at. So that would basically increase the temporal resolution that they can see with. But they can't always do the fastest calls, because when objects are too far away, the calls and echoes will interfere with each other. Totally. The sounds they make are really loud. Like, helicopter taking off next to you loud. But they don't bother us because most bat sounds are at such a high frequency that we can't even hear it. That's probably why we didn't even discover that bats use echolocation until the 1940s. Because we didn't notice until we had the equipment to do it ourselves. If you think about it, the sound bats emit has to travel long distances, bounce off of an object, and return to the bat. By that time, the sound will be much weaker. It's a good thing that most bats have big external ears to catch sound and very sensitive inner ears specially tuned to the frequency of sound that the bat produces. But how does all of that make it to the brain? And how do scientists study the bat brain? Well, a team from the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel were able to attach wireless electrodes to the skulls of a big species of bat the Egyptian fruit bat. Bats were then trained to fly to specific podiums where they would receive a food reward. Oh, so in between the bat and the podium, the scientists could place barriers that have to be navigated around, and surrounding the bats with microphones and cameras capturing the movements and chirps. Totally. Using this setup, the researchers show that, like humans, bats have what's called a tonotopic map in their brain. It's a map of the different frequencies of sounds they hear. Literally, one area of the brain is excited by a low frequency and another by a high frequency. And the area around the frequency of their calls is enlarged so that there are more neurons that are dedicated to encoding these frequencies. This will let the bats detect sounds that are very close together in frequency, and it's these small changes that often tell the bat that, for instance, their prey is on the move. Scientists have even uncovered specialized neurons in bat brains that contain information that might help them navigate the world while they fly up to speeds of 60 miles per hour. Special neurons can encode a bat's location, their head angle, the speed at which they are traveling, and many more things. We probably have neurons like this too, but since we can't just go around sticking electrodes into people's brains when they're moving around, it's helpful to study other species like bats. And the team has bigger goals in mind. They are building a massive flight tunnel at their university to understand how the brains of bats respond during longer, more natural flights. Echolocation is a fascinating way to see when light is scarce that has evolved multiple times in different species. It allows bats to rule the night sky. And while their bodies and brains are specialized for echolocation, 
Many of the discoveries made in bats are likely to tell us more about our brains because, as we understand how their brains are specialized, we can better understand the function of our own specialized systems. Bats are just flying mammals, after all. Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. Brainiacs, you should check out Margot's new podcast, Rad Scientist, at kpbs.org backslash radscientist. She's helping showcase the human side of science with her interviews of local scientists. Margot, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe so you can catch more videos about unusual brains in the future. If you want to see some of the outtakes for this video, head over to our Patreon feed and throw us some support. You can see Margot and I with our spooky Halloween masks. Until our next episode, I'm Ali Astrocyte. Over and out. Stay rad. <laughs> <laughs> See how I injected that there? <laughs>